<laughs> Simon, this uh, interview with Linda Lee Potter. That was horrible. Yeah, that's, this interests me because I've been through this. Um, how, how close is it to what the interview really was? Well, it was one side of the interview. You see what, actually that was a typical example of, of journalism at its very worst, where you literally pour your heart out to someone, because I liked Linda Lee Potter then very much indeed. We had a very nice lunch, which lasted about three hours actually, and I talked to her, as I haven't talked to anyone in, in journalism, for many, many years, really. And she went away with the two sides, and she picked out everything aggressive and presumably copy-worthy, if you like, and decided she'd use it all. I mean, this, there's one uh, excerpt in that which says something, Simon puts his work above his wife and family, bang, like that. Well, you know, everyone puts their work above their wife and family, because if you sit at home on your backside, how are you going to raise your wife and family? How are you going to keep them? Yeah. I mean, ask any traveling salesman now. Ask anybody. They have to make money. You feel this generally about the press in terms of people like yourself, that they, they do this all the time, and, and perhaps even the higher you go, if you go to Queen or Sunday Times or something, the worse it gets. It's been my experience. Yes. I, th I think I have to be very careful. I'm not trying to crawl up anybody's backsides, because the press have been very good to me. They've also been quite hard to me. But I think if you enter any profession or any occupation or business where you are under a certain amount of shall we say, study by people, then you must be studied or uh, allow yourself to be studied by the press and allow them their interpretation of what you do, whether it's good or bad. You've entered upon a field, particularly showbiz, where you know the, the target is very much higher. And if they help to build you up and do, in fact, say, I like Simon, and not like someone says it in your living room, but like four or five million people see it, therefore they're entitled, I think, to, to, to knock you down a bit. It's how you carry on your life that matters anyway, not what the press say. Did you do that on purpose? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, what about this line where you say, uh, I can't uh, stand the way the present government is wrecking the country. I'm sick and tired of the foreign secretary's behavior. I'm exasperated by Harold Wilson's broken promises. Well, I am. I, I think a lot of people are. Well, in what context do you say that um, I mean, is it, does it disturb you at all that you say that as a popular personality as opposed to a knowledgeable person politically, or do you have political knowledge to back it up? Well, let me say this. I don't want to enter uh, any political argument in public because I am not armed to carry out a 100% interview in politics. I have as much knowledge as anyone in my position, perhaps a little bit more because of my position, reading the press and everything. Um, but I suppose I'd like to think anyway that I was as representative anyone of my age um, seeing the government operate around them. And the way I, I, again, Linda Lee Potter, bless her little wooden legs, when I said that to her, it was together with a long spiel that went with it. And of course, she only prints the lead line. Um, I am sick of the government right now in 1967, very much indeed. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Today we had some by-elections, right? And that was a reflected, just a reflection of the country's thinking of the government. They do make promises and they do, they do break them. They're not reaching people. They're just not reaching the individuals, becoming a state of anarchy, if you like. What was your reaction to, um, to the, the Brown outburst this week? I think it was unnecessary. It was completely unnecessary. Um, I think it's very important that the press told us about, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lord Thompson? No, the other Brown. Uh, Philby. Philby, yeah. I think it's very important that we, we heard about Philby. I don't believe in denotices at all. I think, I think the public should be as informed of any goof as they are informed of any success that the government do. To only tell people the good things is rather a one-sided way of running a country, I think. Because it, it's then up to the people to tell the government all the bad things, and they do so, and you have riots, and you have strikes as if the government came in at the start and said, hey, we've got a dodgy scene here, let's clean it up. What do you suggest we do? And you have a think-in and a talk-out or whatever you like, and the thing is solved instead of waiting till this massive Moody comes along and you have a problem on your hands. I'm going to throw one at you now because it just happened to be on the same page uh, of the same paper this week. Uh, Brian Jones got nine months for having a bit of pot in the house. Not quite. Uh, they withdrew the other charge about the cocaine. Yeah. But, but I mean, but it basically came up. It was, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you 
got fined how much? 20 pounds. For going 110 to 120 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, I know. Uh, do you find anything? What's your reaction to that, basically? Um, how do you feel about pot, for example? Well, I think pot is perfectly all right. Um, I have smoked pot, and anyone who says, ah, as a result of saying that, is a little bit of a hypocrite, because it hasn't harmed me. I don't go around sticking needles in my arm. I don't do it every day of the week. I do it to relax myself, and I, I suppose I haven't done it more than a dozen times, right? Because it's unnecessary to me. I don't think I need it. There's nothing wrong with smoking pot. It doesn't harm you. Let people do what they want. To stick that poor guy on a nine-month sentence for doing what he did, and then looking around and seeing some of the people at the other end of the scale who even come into the country and are allowed in, you know, makes the whole balance of the way the law is applied in this country right out of proportion. The wrong people are picked up. He's been made a martyr, actually, by this. You know, he, this isn't the way to reach the youth of this country, which are a major force within it. Design, oh, a million things that the under-30s now do that 10 years ago they weren't even considered capable of, of donating to their community. There's a thing that interests me. Have you noticed since you uh, achieved eminence, as it were, and have a, a weekly outlet on television, yeah. are you surprised at all by some of the people who come on your show for whom you have had respect in the past and what they say and do when they're on your show. Oh. I'm thinking of A.J.P. Taylor at the moment. You mean, am I surprised that they're good or am I surprised they're bad? Well, in his case, I thought he was bending over backwards to impress young people. Yes, I have, I have found, if, if I may use the word loosely, a sort of schizophrenic attitude from people. Um, I remember P.J. Proby coming on once. And Jim Proby, basically, is a very nice guy, actually. You know, I mean, this is one pop singer. I'll talk about other people in a minute. Um, and he was offset. He was great. He was relaxed. He was nice. He was going to talk about his horses and everything, which the kids didn't know about. He comes on. And I said, how's it, Jim? He sits down. I said, how's cigarette? He says, oh, only if it's marijuana. You know, what's that all about? Yeah. And then you get professional people who are uh, entertainers or singers or comedians and who are used to the lights and the cameras and all that jazz. They sit down and it's, <coughs> it's a tight nut. <laughs> and you yeah. see your hand grasping in the chair, and it's all terribly nervous. Um, I find that people talking freely on live television, Bernie, as opposed to tape television, where they can do a bit of that, right? Yeah. But a live television interview is a great leveler. It really exposes the person because they find they're unable to really just give themselves and be natural and stumble or pause. They've got to do it all the time. And, and go, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You know, yeah. they can't relax. There was a thing I noticed about Taylor, I don't know if it occurred to you, um, in point of fact, and this is fact, doctors will tell you that if you have smoked one cigarette in your life, yeah. statistically, there is a greater chance that you will die of lung cancer than if you haven't smoked any. Taylor put it on the basis that if you smoke 40 a day for 20 years, you may die of lung cancer. If you overeat for 20 years, it's a certainty that you'll get a coronary. Now, this seemed to me to be on a show like yours to be a pretty irresponsible thing to say, and I don't think he really meant it. This is what I mean about trying to be liked by young people. Yes, I think, I think he had the wrong approach. I mean, I like A.G.B. Taylor, and I wanted him on because he is a, an incredibly intelligent person and a very knowledgeable person. Um, to have him on was really an experiment of ours to, to see if we could have somebody on, to see anyway if I was capable of talking to someone besides the people of my own age group and people I meet, which I think we did fairly successfully. I think, however, he chose to push the wrong things. Yes, he did. He, he came on with the intention of, I'm going on a live television show with quotes, Simon D, close quotes, who is a pop, or used to be pop. Therefore, I think I should talk about rather aggressive things to get noticed, instead of talking in a relaxed way about things that will interest people about me and about the things I have done as A.J.B. Taylor, as a world historian, which he could have talked at great length about, which I wanted him to talk about which he didn't talk about. In which, in fact, you led him to talk about. Many times, didn't yes. didn't pick you up on. That's yeah. right. How many feet have we got? About 40 feet left. Not worth it. Let's cut there and we'll go on to the next one. <coughs> All right? Yeah. Fine.